Welcome back, everybody, to another Age of Empires cast. This time we're going to have MBL versus Dark on Arabia. This was a ladder match played rather recently between the two. And it'll be uh, Dark as the Saracens in the yellow versus MBL as the Cumans in the blue. But yeah, without any further, er, further ado, let's get started here. Um, so let's talk about the Sibs real quick. Cumans with their... Probably the most notable of all their bonuses, right? Is the fact that they can build a second town center in the Feudal Age. I, th I feel like pretty much everyone opts to do that. We'll see. You can technically ignore that. It does take longer to build, if I recall correctly. And it's, since you're producing... You know, essentially double the villagers... Uh, if you're going to produce out of both TCs anyways... You're probably going to be slower to castle age as a result, but you're going to have a lot more villagers than your opponent, so it still is really powerful, but could technically still see some sort of a fast castle play and just ignore that bonus. Otherwise, they have 5% faster uh, cavalry starting in the Feudal Age. I believe that scales up to 15% in Imperial Age. Um, they get minus 75 wood cost on their... Archer ranges, and more notably, in my opinion, on their stables. So they can really build a bunch of stables. Those buildings normally cost 175 wood. So 100 wood only for archer range and stables. They lean heavily into stable play. Uh, simply because they like Bracer and Arbalest in the Imperial Age. Though in Castle Age, and of course in Feudal Age, their archer range units are perfectly serviceable. They do get th thumb ring. So they can go crossbow. They can go cav archer. You just have to keep in mind that if you make it to Imp, you're probably going to have to tech switch. Especially if you went Crossbow, because you just don't have Arbalest and you don't have Bodkin. If you went for Cav Archers, you could go Heavy CA, but you're still missing Bracer. So, kind of awkward. Um, as a boar comes in here for MBL. But yeah, otherwise they got fully upgraded stables. They can get the Step Husbandry unique tech. I think their Step Lancers and Light Cav build like twice as fast. Or their Scout line, essentially. And um, their Palisade walls get 33% more HP, which actually definitely matters in Arabia. You tend to go for wall off. Speaking of wall off, we're already looking at our third house here, starting the wall to the corner or to the edge of the map, which makes a lot of sense. Gold is very unfavorable here. I mean, yes, it's pretty tidy to wall up if you want to wall to your TC or wall all the way across, but it's just in an awkward spot. It's kind of cramped here because between two wood lines, and it's just very pressurable, if that's a word. <laughs> very easy to pressure right this area so could be kind of awkward the berries are pretty safe stone extra golds i mean yeah this map is not great it's not terrible but i wouldn't call it great either for mbl it's pretty easy to wall that's the plus at very least to your town center if not this is the hard part these two areas are easy enough to wall right but yeah i think we'll likely see scouts like double tc scouts into knights um Oh, also, you can be really cheeky, and you can actually drop a, a Siege Workshop in Feudal Age and build Battering Rams. And in Castle Age, you can actually build Capped Rams out of your Siege Workshop. Um, I mean, you have to get the tech, of course, but that is an option. Deer being pushed in here. Will we see that? I personally don't think so, but it can happen. Dark in the yellow here, who is moving out now with his scout. Um, in fact, is he actually trying to find Deer? No, he's going forward. He never did... F I don't think he found his deer, unless he pushed all three already. Probably should have looked at that. <laughs> but, regardless, Dark's plan is the Saracens. Saracens are a bit more versatile, in my opinion. Ooh, MBL from downtown here. Dark probably going to try to mess with this. Either block the deer or, yeah, get some free hits. He got the first hit here. So his scout will win this fight, unless MBL can do some fancy footwork. Saracens have markets that cost... I believe 100 less wood, so 75 wood on those. Um, they get better market prices by a long shot. They can absolutely live off of their market for... From, like, when they build it until, like, Imperial Age. <laughs> they can completely live off of a market. It's really sick. Uh, MBL actually ended up getting some high ground shots. And got the advantage as a result. And now Dark has to run away. So really nice scout micro from MBL. And Dark is on the way to Feudal... A little bit faster than MBL. Which is interesting because they have the same amount of bills. You know what? MBL got Loom, and I don't think Dark did. Let's take a peek. 
No, Dark did not get Loom. That's why he's uh, about 20 seconds faster here. It shouldn't matter. And he knows that because MBL scouts hurt, right? And he know that, knows that MBL was pushing, which means he's probably not going for a Drush because you usually send your scout with your Drush. He also probably... Well, I'm not sure that... Yeah, Dark doesn't even know what where MBL is technically, though he knows he's around here because of the push. But he can't say for sure that there's no barracks. But it's pretty unlikely a Drush is going to come out when the scout has 9 health and wanted to push that deer. Because you know he's going to want to push that deer. He was already showing that he was trying to do it. So, Dark being greedy here, but not going to get punished for it. So not going to go up with a uh, Vil less. But Saracens do get the plus 2 bonus damage versus buildings for their foot archers. So this archery range is a very solid opener. Um... Archers coming out of it can actually start getting some damage done on buildings. MBL coming for the scout, going to see the archery range. I'm thinking it's going to be yeah, stable for the Kumans, of course. And he's got a ch good chunk of wood here. He might save for the second town center. We'll keep an eye on that. Saracens, their camel units also get 25% bonus HP or 20% bonus HP. I forget the exact amount. So that applies to, of course, camel riders and heavy camel rider. But it also applies to... Mamluks, if we happen to see them. Notably, Saracens do not get Cavalier, despite having full upgrades otherwise. So, can be a little weird there, like the transition, like they can go Knights, Camels, but you, if you rely really heavily on Knights, if you make it to Imp, you can't actually switch to Cavalier. So, can be kind of weird. They do get Arbless with, I believe, full upgrades. I think they have Thumb Ring. Um, they have Hand Cannoneers, if that is necessary, and Bombard Cannons. But they kind of have a lot of options, but I feel like they don't really excel. Besides with camels, they don't really excel at anything too uh, spicy. So we'll see what Dark wants to do here. He's got some archers. Well, he's got two archers and then a third in the queue. But MBL arriving with two scouts here. Wait, Dark still has no loom. This vill is... Absolutely dead. Scouts do five damage a shot, and they only have 25 health, so... Five hits from two scouts. That's easy. And the blacksmith's been denied, so no fletching. Does Dark not realize? Surely he doesn't realize. Or it's just like a super greedy build. He's not walled off, so no loom when you're not walled off seems really, really greedy to me. But yeah, he's, he's still no loom coming in here. He's just producing vills. He's going to be a vill behind now because he's lost a vill. Well, he's not really a vill behind. He's like part of a vill behind. Because the loom is throwing off the, the balance there between the two players. The idle TC time is identical. Six seconds, five seconds. But there is loom tech in there for MBO, which I still think is wise, even though he hasn't taken damage at home. Usually loom is something you get right before you click up the feudal or right after you click up the feudal on uh, Arabia anyway. As the spear is added here to help fight back these scouts, the jaguar goes down. MBO put up another building at home. It's going to be a blacksmith. Okay, so... I was wondering if it was a double stable situation with the cheaper wood cost. And has he put up a second town center? He actually has not. So he's not going to go for the uh, the feudal boom with the two TCs. It doesn't look like it at all, does it? Because he's just really not saving that wood. And I think that's actually fine here. He's going to play it standard. If you do that, you're stretching your resources really thin because you have to spend twice as much on villagers in feudal. Of course, it pays back dividends if you stay alive, but you're going to get pressured... You're, you're gonna have to make a cut. You probably can't produce scouts, two uh, TC's worth of villagers, and skirmishers, and he really wants to go scout skirms here, because it completely shuts down the army from Dark. Dark is on archer spears. Spears melt to skirms, and archers, of course, do very poorly into skirms, though with the correct numbers, but I mean, fighting uphill, both sides have fletching, so the range is the same. Nice micro from both players, though. That volley from MBL gonna completely whiff here. And now Dark has managed to path onto a hill, though he's going to walk away from it. I think that's very interesting. He didn't want to fight downhill against these three skirms. I mean, sure, he'd lose some more archers, but I feel like you would win that. Now he has to fight uphill again. He does pick up a skirm here. Oh, and he adds a scout of his own. I completely missed that. He's added a stable. So, wow, he's built two ranges, a blacksmith, and a stable in the feudal age. He is chugging through wood right now. But villager production still... Actually, no, villager production is probably going to have to halt soon. He only has five on food. As uh, MBL loses three scouts here. And the skirms are basically the main army now. He's got one scout left. He's going to add two more. Okay. 
Does he have double... No. Just kind of a 1-1-1. One, one, one. Well, he's not building out of the barracks, but... Yeah, one stable, one range, one barracks. Really just using his stable in the range, of course. 19 on food, though. And 7 on wood. I mean, he doesn't need any on gold, right? Dark needs everything, because he's basically building everything. Well, he stopped building spears, but... Now he's doing scouts archers. So he needs food, wood, and gold. Whereas MBL only needs food and wood. Now he will need to get 200 gold at some point to get the castle age, but we're not really thinking about that right now, so we're not worried about that at all. He is going to add the second TC now. Okay. He does drop the second TC. So it is actually going to be uh, a cumin boom. It's just going to be a little bit later to start, but I like that because he's got initiative here. He's taking advantage as Oliver, my cat, who might have just been making it into the frame. I'm not sure. Has decided he wants to snack on my headset cable. So if you see... <laughs> If you see that wobbling and and me uh, trying to grab that, that's why. You might see his tail every now and then or his little ears peeking up into the frame, but right now he's he's calmed down again. Anyway, <laughs> my goodness. Cats, you gotta love them, but they are little goblins and trolls for sure. As Scale Barding comes in, sets so a plus one armor for these scouts, so they will have three pierced armor versus the five pierced damage from the archers, so they'll only take two damage a shot. That's a very nice tech to get here. No bloodlines yet for him. It's a bit more expensive. He doesn't have the gold yet. He is on gold now, so he might be thinking about bloodlines soon. Or just think about castle, not sure which. He, I doubt he's going to archers, so he's added gold for a reason. Uh, notably for his skirmishers, he has the full upgrades for feudal. He's got the attack, and he's got the padded archer armor. So now they only take one damage shot from archers, and he's going to dive on these vills. Vills are going to have to fight back. They're going to have to be part of the army here. Dark is now four vills behind. He's getting forging for his scouts. I think that's a little interesting. I guess he's going pretty heavy. He's committing pretty heavy on the scouts. So he's going to get the plus one attack. Bloodline's coming in now for MBL. Both players have the first level eco upgrades. The feudal age, you know, double bit axe and horse color. So no advantages there. Nobody has wheelbarrow. Kind of makes sense. There's not that many farms. I mean, MBL's 20 farms. Wheelbarrow... I forget the sweet spot on the wheelbarrow. I think it's something like 20, 25 bills. So he's probably close to where he could click if he wants to, but it's probably fine if he doesn't. And uh, as the fight continues here, both sides just kind of picking away at each other. But I think Dark is on the... Kind of the unfair... I mean, it's pretty neutral. MBL, I think, lost more units there, right? The KD... Actually, the KD's in favor of MBL. But... I don't think Dark can really fully push MBL back here as it stands. Even with double range production, that feels terrible. He has to kill more skirmishers, but more skirmishers are trickling across the map, and that's all MBL needs. He just needs to buy time. He doesn't have to ab absolutely crush this. Because here's the thing, he no longer needs to kill Vils to be dealing damage, and that might sound strange. Or even cause idle t eco time or anything like that. Speaking of idle time, he's actually got more idle time because he's on two TCs. Has to manage them both. Wheelbarrow coming in now. Yeah, at the 26 uh, farm mark. Okay. So it must be in the 20s where MBL feels like, okay, that's where I really want to get that. But anyway, I want to drive the point home here, so I'm going to dial back as I distract myself. <laughs> if MBL is just idling here, he's still dealing damage because he's on two town centers. As long as he doesn't idle his town centers too long, but he's five bills ahead, right? So as long as he's not being pressured, he can just take the vill lead and thus the economy lead. And he's even getting wheelbarrow while he's still building vills. So he's not even losing vill lead while getting wheelbarrow, normally at least lose that, because it's about two and a half vills of research time. But that's not even going to happen to him here, as this skirmisher gets a little overambitious, perhaps. Was looking to get that year-end bonus, and actually stays alive here. His ambition does not get him killed. Surprising. Wheelbarrow will come in for Dark now, 27 farms of his own. So absolutely no slouch there. And Scale Barding comes in. They're both committing heavy to fuel. This is actually a sick game. Loving this. This is a very protracted feudal fight. Like, very often we're well out of feudal by now. So this is pretty sick. Scout's gonna posture up here. Uh, scout numbers are even, and archer numbers are starting to make the difference here, I think. There's nine archers versus only, like, three or four skirms. I think it was like about five skirms, but a couple died right off the bat. Yeah, and now MBL is actually going to get pushed back for real. And that could be a bit more of a concern for him, right? Granted... This town center will do a pretty good job of protecting, but depending on where the archers stand, they might be able to stand like back here and hit with their five range. 
Concerns of six, so you're gonna have to be a little fancy, but... Yeah, Emil's gonna need to start closing the walls here. He's actually open on this side and open here. He, he had to... Because he was pressuring, he kind of had the luxury of not needing to wall up. He's on double range now. His ranges, remember, cost less to put out. Oh, he's on double stable as well. I completely missed that. We haven't checked his base for a while because the action's been outside of dark. So he's just really all in on this. I mean, his economy's booming behind it, right? And dark's gonna go to the castle age here. Thinking, okay, we gotta get a more powerful composition to make something happen. And a third stable being produced by MBL. He's on 32 farms. He can churn out scouts. This is super dangerous for Dark. He's just spent 800 food and 200 gold to go up. Though he actually still has plenty of res in the bank. His economy's kind of moving too. And he can use the market heavily if he needs to. I have failed to see how much he used it. But it looks like he can get 119 gold if he sells... 100 food right now, which is pretty insane. So, he can definitely rebalance there as the Saracens. MBL gonna click up now, too. So it wasn't actually... I thought he was about to flood out scouts, but that's actually wrong for me. He's gonna do probably the more sensible long-term thing and go up. But, ooh, he did overchop here. Another stable coming out. Four stable production. Is nine on gold gonna be enough for four stable knights? Five stables! Okay. He's got to be going scouts to open, right? Oh, no, he's adding more to gold. 13. Is he going to mix, like, light cav and knights? Maybe go step lancers? I just don't know if he has enough gold bank to, to do, like, five stable production of a gold unit. But, uh, chain barding instantly clicked. Light cav instant, instantly clicked here for the Saracens. I find that very interesting. I feel like he has enough to be able to go double stable knights. Or camels, if he decides he needs camels. But he's going to go light cab off the rip and uh, husband tree to make his uh, mounted units faster. MBL balling up scouts. Yeah, he's got nine scouts. He's definitely going light cab. Okay, both sides just going light cab here. Upgrades, of course, are going to be in favor of dark here to start. So as Oliver gets a little aggressive and starts applying pressure on my headset cable. <laughs> Dark is going to try to apply pressure on MBL, but MBL actually balled up archers behind us as well. And I didn't really pay attention to that for some reason. And Dark's probably going to be a little surprised to see that he went archers with Kumans. They're totally fine in Castle, by the way. But it's not necessarily the most common play, I don't think. So, Camel's being added now, but you know what? MBL probably did it because he expected Camels, and Camels aren't that great at dealing with archers. So, don't hate it. And yeah, I mean... Dark is about to go camels. So, the point will still stand here. 70 bills to 48, by the way. Dark is still in 1 TC against what he knows is... Well, does he even actually know for sure that's 2 TC? He doesn't. He doesn't see the second town center. He doesn't know it for sure, but it is Kuman, so you have to suspect it at least. Camels for MBL going to be added here. Perfectly serviceable, though I do believe they lack heavy camel. I kind of forget now. There's so many sieves. I believe they lack heavy camel, but it's still fine in the castle age, right? Board Siege Workshop with a mangonel in it feels very, very, very ambitious and very much like it's not going to get a lot done. Since Dark had to abandon it and run back. Going for a conversion now. The monk gets sniped by the light cav. The camels are clearing each other up here. Reinforcements are closer to home for Dark, but... MBL has five stables that he's producing from a mix of camels and light calf. He's, he's quit the archer production. He forced a siege workshop in a mangonel with those archers, and that's so nice for him. That's so much invested. Holy moly, and the game is over. Just like that. Light calf camel was the comp for both players. I mean, most of the comp, right? <laughs> kind of uh, a lot of things in that one. That was a pretty cool game. I like that. And, uh, yeah. Like have OP, I guess. Don't even need knights. I think that's what the takeaway is here. Like have new meta. But no, actually, in both sides, I think... I can definitely see why NBL went it, actually... Since Dark had been on Archers heavily. Like, have don't do that bad against Archer, even Crossbow, to be honest. 
and you just kind of put your gold into a couple camels to help deal with the you probably thought there'd be some knights there but regardless the camels and light cap from dark it kind of makes sense just to match it right because you have five stables anyways you're just out producing you're gonna have the better economy there as the cumins as well at least initially and dark was never able to add more town centers so you just kind of flood and yeah then the monks which i know have been very prevalent the monks aren't as potent if you go for knights camels knights and camels both are easier to convert right and are slower so i don't know that that would have mattered anyway i feel like just the outproduction and the and the economy here from mbl is just so strong that i'm not sure a couple of monks really make the difference but they really don't make the difference when there's Scat or light cav mixed in that can just snipe them and then protect the camels so yeah pretty sick gameplay from mbl liked it all all the way around from both players though i really liked from mbl that he was more aggressive initially in feudal age before dropping that second town center um usually utilizing that behind his pressure to get a safer boom instead of just immediately dropping that with like his first 275 wood and not really having a lot of pressure and then having to stave off the pressure, right? That makes you the defender. And being the defender can work totally fine, but it's just kind of more com comfy. Oh my word, there was a hole here from the wood line uh, being chopped. Actually here too, I think, but it doesn't really matter, does it? But yeah, GG's to MBL, GG's to Dark. Cool game. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I know it's on the shorter side, but I thought it was still a pretty neat one. Uh, simply because both sides with a light cav camel mix, I thought it was kind of cool. A lot of times you see knights open. Um, but yeah, felt like Light Cav actually did a lot of work for both. And I also really like the Feudal War there. The Feudal War was very long for what I feel like I see a lot of times. And I thought it was pretty cool micro across the board. And the final closing thought is I thought it was neat from MBL that even though... I mean, ultimately he ended up killing 10 vills, but I think some of them are right here at the end. Uh, early on, I think he killed what, about five total vills, like, during Feudal Age, if that, which is, like, good, but he was still doing damage simply because he could have a second town center, and I thought that was cool, so that was a fun point to highlight that you don't, with someone like the Kumans anyway, you don't necessarily have to get in there and dive and kill 55 vills in the Feudal if you're keeping your opponent off your back and you're booming out two TCs, you're already going to be ahead in eco as long as you're doing it. Uh, effectively and not idling both of them too much right so there we go um thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed that there will be more videos in the near future so stay tuned for those if you enjoyed it i'd appreciate if you slam that subscribe button all that good stuff leave a comment what you thought about everything and maybe a like as well and if you really enjoy me for whatever reason <laughs> I'd appreciate if you check me out on my Twitch channel as well. I play a couple of different games. I do a lot of H stuff as of late. And we've been going through some Super Mario RPG remake and all that good stuff. You can see that link in the description below the video. But yeah, until next time. Hope you have a great rest of your night, morning, or day. And peace.